Hello, DX Engineering fans. It is Tuesday afternoon. That means it's time for Tuesdays with DX Engineering. Today, we have Wayne K8FF from the DX Engineering Sales and Support Team. Hello, Wayne. Hi, Tim. Thanks for asking me to be on today. Well, it's great to have you here, Wayne. And uh, certainly now with uh, here in North America, that it is uh, that time of year when it's fall and the leaves are falling and the temperatures are falling. But what a great time of the year to put up antennas, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Best time of the year. And the colder it is, the better they work. Well, yeah. And, you know, um, I know that you have a lot of experience with antennas. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that you get lots of questions about antennas that you recommend. But I, I heard here recently that there was an addition to your uh, amateur radio presence at your house in that there is now an antenna in the front yard. <laughs> there was. It was there for a very short period of time. Um, I, I decided I was going to build a wire moxon for 20 meters and make it vertically polarized so I could hang it from a tree. Right. Um, it all went well, hung it from the tree. I came in and did a few uh, tech, uh, checks with it, made a few contacts. The results were, were pretty good. And then that night we had a storm and a limb fell out of the tree and completely destroyed it. And that was before I got a chance to do any front to back checks or anything like that. But the initial performance was, was encouraging. So um, tell us about this Moxon, Wayne. Uh, did, uh, I'm, I'm assuming it was two elements, but how did you make it and, and, and bend back the elements and, and do all that? Well, what I decided to do because I wanted to hang it from a tree was use a fiberglass pole for the top and the bottom. So the sides were sort of in free space. Um, the, the dimensions on the Moxon were actually from uh, one of those online Moxon calculators. They work pretty well. You're, you're able to put in the wire dimension, uh, the diameter of the wire so that the calculations come out correct. And I build it exactly like it said, uh, oriented it to the northeast, fed it with some uh, old RG8X just to get it up in the tree. Uh, the spreader on the top was about 10 feet long. The one on the bottom, same thing, about 10 feet long. The vertical dimension was, I think, 27 feet. So it, it was relatively close to the ground. And I didn't use a ballon or anything, hooked the coax up and, you know, it worked. I was happy. <laughs> well, that, that's a great story. And there's nothing like making your own antenna. I mean, we have lots of parts here at DX Engineering, the wire, the insulators, uh, the coax, obviously, ballons. Um, but there's nothing quite like the satisfaction that you just described of making your own antenna. Well, absolutely. You know, and it, it's one of the few things that we can still play with. Um, you know, it, uh, and, and I think we've talked about this before. Um, when I get the bug to work 160 meter contest, I really don't have a 160 meter antenna. So what I do is I have a pulley up on the tower at about the 65 foot level and I'll pull something up there just, you know, for the contest. So it, it'll last a couple of days. I'll take it down. And I've played with uh, quarter wave inverted L's, um, three eighths wave inverted L's, which work pretty well. And it's really amazing uh, how well they work. You know, just for a piece of wire, right, Wayne? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that, absolutely. You know, that, that, piece of wire. Isn't that what it's all about? <laughs> you know, <laughs> when we started out, we were hanging wires from trees. And, and guess what? Here I am 65 years later, and I'm still hanging wires from trees. <laughs> now, um, let's talk about, you went to a ham fest on Sunday. Yes. And, uh, tell me about some of the things that you saw at the ham fest. Well, you know, th that ham fest is kind of interesting. Um, you see lots of things, you know, lots of old equipment, um, things that you look at and you say, boy, you know, I remember I had one of those once. And there was uh, some very interesting stuff there. A lot of old Heath kit stuff, um, uh, old Swan, uh, and, and you know, they just <laughs> Tempo Ones. Remember Tempo Ones? 
I do. I do. There was remember. one of those there for fifty dollars, and I, you know what? I almost bought it. But wow, fifty dollars! And I mean, if it works, you're you're on the air, right? Well, unfortunately, that one didn't have a power supply, and that's a bit of a problem on a Tempo One. Yeah. But um, I, that's a pretty nice ham fest. Uh, it, it's uh, yeah, about forty five minutes from my house, but it's it's kind of neat because when you finish looking at all the radio equipment, you, you can look at the airplanes. <laughs> well, you know, um, when you're thinking about even getting started in this hobby, you know, one of the things that I know you hear on the phones and through our email system is that, wow, you know, everything is so expensive, Wayne. And so going to a local ham fest like that, you can get some really good bargains. Oh, absolutely. I think you could probably get an HF transceiver for three, four hundred dollars. Oh, in fact, you know, even maybe a little less. Well, it's possible, sure. That that one ham fest that we were at was at the Cleveland Ham Fest recently. That um, uh, the Atlas two hundred and ten for one hundred and fifty dollars. You know that that's again. If you get that Atlas two hundred and ten, you hook it up to a good a thirteen point eight volt power supply, right, and a little bit of coax and some wire, and you're in business. Right, right. You're not going to work the work bands, but you're going to get on the basic bands and, and have some fun. You know, it's it, my POTUS setup is kind of interesting. I've got about a 30, it's at least 30 years old, uh, old Kenwood TS-50. And it's it's a no-brainer radio. You can turn it on and it works. And it's it's just perfect for POTA. You know, it... That, that's really cool when you can take a radio off the shelf and just turn it on and it hasn't been on for maybe a year, two, three, four years. Exactly. And poof, the magic uh, and it works. And of course, uh, we had a question, where was the ham fest? And it was the Maslin ham fest. And talk about the connection with the airplanes there. Well, they have it at the MAPS Air Museum, which is um, a lot of World War II stuff, Vietnam era stuff. And um, it, it's a very neat museum, and they have it inside the museum every year. And it, it's it's very cool. Uh, it, it's a neat neat place to visit, even when there isn't a ham fest. Right, right. And of course, uh, pretty close to your QTH. I want to go into the chat room, uh, Wayne. And if you have questions for Wayne uh, later on, you and you didn't get a chance to ask him in the chat room today. Make sure that you email Wayne at dxengineering at dxengineering.com or give a call. And if Wayne's working, um, he'll certainly come to the phone uh, here at DX Engineering. Jacob is on from the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Alpha India 5 X-Ray Radio. And Ron, November Victor 5 Hotel, he's on from the Philippines. And uh, looking at the Geocron here, Wayne, uh, in the Philippines, uh, the sun isn't up yet. <laughs> no, no. I can move my head and you can see it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, Rodney is on Alpha Echo 5 Tango X-Ray, also from the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Kyle, Kilo Charlie 9, India Mike Alpha. Our good friend Jimmy Cessna, Kilo Bravo 8 November is on. And Jason from Des Moines, Iowa. It's Kilo Echo Zero, India Alpha Victor. And uh, Donnie, Kilo Kilo Four, Echo Kilo Kilo from Tennessee. He says, you're a one of a kind antenna man. <laughs> <laughs> now, Wayne, I think we ought to ask your wife about that because the story I heard wasn't that it was a storm that took down the antenna in the front yard. Ooh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, may maybe... Maybe your wife wasn't too keen on the idea. Well, it, that's possible. But you know what? I don't think she even saw it. Oh, it was it, late it in the was, afternoon when I no. put it up and it was starting to get dark. And uh, <laughs> but but uh, my uh, daughter noticed it the following day for sure. <laughs> it was a stealth antenna. All right. Yeah. Uh, there. Were, <laughs> I think it was number 26 wire for that reason. <laughs> Well, that's what we have that number 26 wire for here at DX Engineering is so that people can't see it. Jeff well, is on with us. November 3, Juliet Delta. He likes the subject. 
Brian, W7, Juliet Echo Tango from out in Arizona, but he could be flying somewhere on Alaska Airlines. The best part of building antennas or other things ham related is when they work like they're supposed to on the first try. Exactly. Oh, look at this, Wayne. Uh, Lauren is on, your daughter, and uh, happy ham anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thanks, Lauren. Nice to have Lauren on here. And uh, Ron, <clears throat> the ham fest was at MAPS. And Tom, uh, November 4, Hotel Alpha India Portable 8, just got the beam up in time for sweepstakes and now trying to figure out how to put up a loop. I already got my ladder line, my ununbound, and my coax from DX Engineering. Well, Tom, we wish you good luck. And certainly, if you have any problems or questions, you can call in. From Mexico, it's X-Ray Echo 2, Zulu, Zulu. Our friend Mike Maury, Kilo Echo 3, Juliet Papa. Got his uh, repeater amplifier back online a few days ago. Richard, Mike Zero Delta Sierra Kilo from England this year. And speaking of a place where the sun is still down, Victor Kilo 2, India Zulu. Richard is on from Australia, from Alaska. Kilo Lima 5, November Echo is on today. And Larry, Kilo Bravo 0, Sierra Queen Whiskey. Addy is on from the UK. I'm looking for ideas to add 160 meters to an 80 meter quarter wave vertical. Well, Addy, one of the ideas, and I know Wayne has uh, done a lot of uh, working with inverted L's, is to feed them in parallel. Uh, and sometimes that, that will work without getting interaction between the two. What do you think, Wayne? Well, I think that's a good idea, and it's certainly worth a try. It's the, the easiest way to go. Um, you could also uh, do some loading at the base of it. It's uh, probably not the most efficient way to go, but uh, you could certainly do that. Yeah, and, you know, sometimes, I mean, that, that's a basic premise behind the DX Commander antenna, which has uh, all the elements in parallel. Exactly. Um, M Radio uh, Supply. Oh, go ahead. My DX Commander, I have it set up for um, 80, 60, 40, and 30. And so okay. the, 80, the 80 meter element actually goes up and then off to a tree. So it's sort of an inverted L as well. And it there works great on all, all four bands. Beautiful, beautiful. Kilo Fox 8 Alpha Sierra Echo is on. And our friend uh, Dave, Kilo 8 Delta Victor, also a member of the DX engineering team. Hard to be at a good wire antenna, and he recommends them often. Uh, we got Mark on here, Whiskey 8 Bravo Bravo Queen from the DX Engineering team. And from Arizona, it's Kilo 7 Whiskey Mike India. Leo is on with us today. Uh, Wayne, what about the sunspot cycle? What You know, we're, <laughs> we're sitting here with a flux of about 130. Um, what do you think is going to happen this winter? Well, it, it, if it's anything like it was uh, on 10 meters at CQ Worldwide last week, uh, you know, I'm all for it. it it's, it's been amazing. It really has. Um, that, and you can attest to that too, Tim, that conditions on 10 meters, you know, for the stations to spread all the way up above 29 megahertz because it was so crowded. Uh, it was just, just incredible. Well, it's always great to see so many people on the air at once like that. And certainly with the sun, the sunspots where they are, solar flux of about 130, that's plenty to open up. Uh, and even on six meters, the guys are, are having some fun worth working Africans, et cetera. Uh, Ron says, if somebody wanted to learn the basics about wire antennas, is there a book you would recommend? And, uh, you know, you can't go wrong with the ARL antenna book. Wayne might have a book right there. Look at that. Basic Antennas. That's an ARL book, and it's available at DX Engineering. There's something like 18 books from ARRL on antennas. But that, that one on basic antennas would be perfect for Ron. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's just a lot of information out there. And, and it's, it's a fun read. And uh, you get to play, you know, it, it, it is, uh, it's an excellent source of information and they're readily available. And uh, Colin in Australia says, I should be going to bed, 
but people keep going live. <laughs> it's five <laughs> o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. Well, and, we could um, go on for hours about antennas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> KF8 ASE says, Salty Walt Hudson. His new antenna sketchbook is great. There it is. Portable antenna sketchbook. I, th I have that book, too, and uh, I think it's great. Uh, Chris is on also from uh, Melbourne, Australia. Victor Kilo 3, Fox Yankee. Always good to see you, uh, Chris. And Brian said, CQ Worldwide was awesome. My wife, W7EVE, is on the NA7TV contest team with me and had an amazing run on 10 meters Sunday morning running the Kilo Yankee 7 mic call. Well, Wayne, I'm going to let you get back to the phones and then maybe even sneak in a little antenna project today. Well, I don't know. There's too many leaves in the yard to worry about antennas right now. <laughs> all right. Wayne, thanks for coming on and thanks for helping all the customers and, uh, and taking care of things. Thanks to all of you for watching, especially the guys from DX Engineering that are here to answer your questions and help you have more fun with the best hobby in the world. Until next time, 73 from DX Engineering. 73.